everybody, it's Megan with College Uncomplicated. Welcome to our third episode of Real Talk where we're talking about passion versus profit when picking your majors. This is in reaction to a segment on NPR, which the link is in the description. Um, I would highly suggest that you listen to that first and this is basically our reaction. So, ladies. Well, let's first introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Kylie. I studied at University of Delaware and majored in anthropology education, and I'm originally from Oxford, Ohio. Hey, my name is Anisha. I'm from Los Angeles, California. I studied psychology at Pepperdine University. Awesome. So ladies, what did we think about this segment? I've had a lot of conversations based around this topic of profit versus passion. And, you know, personally, I was able to pick a major based off passion, though I was encouraged to major in, um, in engineering, which is much more profitable than anthropology education. But I also realized that m me having this choice it w was a privilege, and I didn't actually realize that till, um, I graduated and dealt and started dealing with other people, especially students of mine who do not have that choice, and they they are picking their majors based off of careers that will um, give them a pretty solid income with a four-year degree because that is their top priority coming from um, a different background than I did. Um, I thought it was really interesting, like being a psychology major, um, and have them contrast the two of um, engineering and psychology. Um, I think kind of definitely when I went into studying psychology, um, I knew it wasn't going to be a um, lucrative career, um, and it's not a terminal um, degree. A lot of times, um, professors encourage us to go to grad school afterwards. Um, and that's one thing to highlight about the article too is that this was based on bachelor's degrees, mm -hmm. like not comparing graduate degrees. So mm -hmm. that was one thing I wanted to pop in there. Too. Yeah, and I would say certain degrees kind of require you to go to grad school to specialize, um, and that's when you can make more money um, and the degree be more profitable in that sense. And so I thought it was a little bit um, unfair how they contrasted the two. Um, so you psychology clearly, like you would need to go to graduate mm -hmm. school, right? Right. Um, if you want to specifically um, go into the field of psychology and do mm -hmm. counseling or research or that type of thing. Mm -hmm. um, so, I don't know, that was kind of kind of rubbed me the wrong way a little bit, um, just hearing that. But, I mean, it's definitely something to consider, like, how much are you going to be able to make um, with the degree? Um, but I think and I, how, like, I've always believed it's, it's really not necessarily, like, it's important what you major in, but also what you do with that major. Um, so while you're in college still, before you graduate, um, are you networking with professors um, or um, different organizations that you'd like to work with? Um, are you establishing um, experience, whether through volunteering or part-time work, um, so that you have stuff on your resume that when you do graduate, um, you have an understanding of um, what job you want to enter into and if you're qualified for that field. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not just finishing a degree and then getting that job, it's also being a qualified applicant. Mm -hmm. I think that's something that's like very important and can add value to your degree as well. Right. So you're suggesting that students probably do internships like while they're in school or mm -hmm. even like looking at job um, descriptions beforehand and being like, oh, this is a job I would want. Like what do they require of that person or something mm -hmm. like that? I think that's a good way to talk about it. Um, let's kind of break it down a little bit. One thing like at the beginning of this segment, they were the, the, I forget the gentleman's name, he was talking about how um, he believes that m your major is more important than your college choice. What, what do y'all think about that? I agree in, in that sense, if you're talking about, um, I think, you know, there, it does vary depending on like, you know, if you took one school, if you took the two extremes of, you know, a spectrum when it comes to schools for a specific discipline, I think it could matter. Uh, but like I know Texas A&M College Station, they they might not have the best programs of everything, um, but they have one of the I think is like highest employment post employment rates of any um, public school because of the network that the mm -hmm. alumni post graduation yeah post employment. graduation yeah. employment I'm sorry no, um, of any school public school because of their alumni mm -hmm. network. So I think it's not as black as black and white as he makes it seem, 
but I do I do agree in the basic sense that what what your degree is is going to have more of an impact on your income than where you went to school mm -hmm. for the most part mm -hmm. I think that's a accurate statement. I also liked how they did um, mention in the video that um, not everyone can major in engineering or any of these um, majors or careers that are very, very lucrative. Um, mm -hmm. And so I think that's definitely something to consider, like um, just finding a major that um, not like I think definitely like that you're going to enjoy studying, uh, like finding the balance between enjoy studying it, but also maybe um, looking at how much you're actually um, projected to make. Um, once you graduate because I think it's hard to say oh well I'm only gonna pick a major based upon salary when you I mean that might be not a good fit for you you won't be successful if you're not gonna pass your classes you're not gonna become a petroleum engineer mm -hmm. exactly and that that actually happened with one of my friends like um, her parents wanted her to, to be a doctor like so she was just like okay I'm gonna go the doctor out oops and um, she ended up like I don't think she could pass calculus I think she took it twice and she ended up just like she was really like freaking out and then sophomore year I think she was able to transfer to the College of Communication she ended up getting into PR and um, she has like a full-time position now like it didn't even matter now but it's just like she I felt like she wasn't happy and then on top of that it was just like you know science just wasn't her thing you know and that's not bad like we don't not everybody has like the the brain for it, you know, and it's just like that you have to find like your niche, your niche, whatever. <laughs> but um, so, what what do y'all think? Like when you when you were considering your major, did you did you think about um, about the salary of the position that you would get out of school, or was that a consideration when you were picking your major? My family didn't really push on uh, me looking into um, salary or income with a major. Um, I think the reason why is because uh, my mom studied education, um, but she decided she didn't want to be a teacher and she's in sales and makes a significant um, amount of money um, compared to how much she would have made if she was a teacher. And for her, um, her company, how it worked is she just needed to have a degree. It didn't matter what it was in. Um, and so I think just kind of seeing how she was able to use her degree and her experience to her advantage um, to be able to make um, a certain amount of money. Um, I, I think that's why I took on the kind of the philosophy. It's more about what you do with that degree than what exactly it is. And, um, right. and I mean, I know a lot of my teachers, um, professors encouraged me to go to grad school, um, because with psychology, that's just what they do. Um, but I don't see myself going to grad school for psychology, but I still, I feel like with my other experience that I've had and, um, different jobs I've had, um, just the networking, um, I've been able to do um, and just the experience of being able to gain um, while in college and post. Um, I don't know. I just feel like I don't know. Sounds hard, but just that I'll be able to figure out how much I need to make and be able to make it. Um, right. I don't feel limited by my degree um, by whatever the projected salary is, and I think it was a little bit interesting in the um, in the article how they mentioned um, kind of. The outliers who make all this money um, and that, how that's not the norm and I think to think of people who own companies that is a huge outlier but there are people in the middle um, mm -hmm. who make more than what's projected um, with their degree right. because of what they do with it exactly and I think what you're what you're touching on is just the fact that what you major in in college especially at the bachelor's level does mm -hmm. not indicate what field you're mm -hmm. going to be in like you're not and that was one thing that I didn't realize until I started talking to people when I was at UT. It was just like, I thought that once you picked a major, you were stuck with that major. Or like when you went to grad school, you had to like have a bachelor's in that and then go to grad school. You know what I mean? Like it, it would have to be like a, a ladder basically. And it's like, no, that's definitely not what you have to do. And there's so many people that I know after graduating who have positions at organizations or companies that, that aren't even relevant to their to their major. Like it's just the fact that you have the bachelor's degree that really helps. But I mean, obviously, I and I, I feel like I should touch on this because um, I actually thought that it, it, in college that I wasn't going to be um, that that worried about the money. Like I I was 
I figured that I just wanted to do something that I loved. I had parents who worked jobs that just as I was growing up, they hated it, like their bosses were terrible. And I knew what that was like to be in a family where they just, where you just hated your job. And so I was like, no, I'm gonna do something that I love. Like I'm, I wanna do something I'm passionate about where I'm giving back. And, um, but then after graduating, it's like right now, I honestly, like I, I'm gonna real talk with y'all, like I, I can't find a job. And it's like, I wish though that I would have maybe had a more balanced approach when I was in college where it was like, okay, I'm going to do media studies, but then maybe have like a certificate in business or something like that, where it's like, here's my tangible skills where I can get a, get a job with it. And then hopefully I can get a job that also overlaps with like the major that I'm really passionate about. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So go ahead. Go and ahead. I was going to say like something that I don't think is brought to these conversations very often but should be is that networking exactly. that word was never thrown at me as an undergraduate or in high school and that's very frustrating to me because i was given like you know i went to a good university i had great professors i had a good support system yet networking was not a word i heard I mean, I heard it occasionally, but I didn't understand the importance of it until after graduation this past year when I've started thinking about like, okay, what do I really want to get into long term? Now that I know it's not education, you know, because networking is key in so many fields like psychology and anthropology and, you know, not things that aren't you know med and engineering and things like that that that's how you get a job is who you know mm -hmm. and that's where the importance like anisha was saying of internships yeah. comes in yeah and i just wish that like that i was encouraged to do more of that in mm -hmm. in college even though i was anthropology ed and i was on the track of being a social studies teacher i ended up you know very late in the game realizing that wasn't for me and I wish on the anthropology side of that, I had been pushed to, you know, pursue anthropology in a more serious way, um, whether it be internships or even looking into grad school or um, just anything. And I, I feel like I, I never was. I didn't really know that there were options. And, you know, luckily I have a job now where I have plenty of opportunities to network and get to know organizations that I have interests with. Mm -hmm. But that would have been very beneficial to know three years ago when I was still an undergrad right. and could be building up my resume right now. Yeah. And... And I think I'm in the in the same boat is that like that's kind of one of my biggest regrets of my of like my four years at UT is that I wish I would have done more like tangible internships. Like I didn't start doing internships until the summer after I graduated because I thought I wanted to go into academia. I thought I wanted to go and like be a professor. And then afterwards I was like, ooh, I don't know if this is the field for me. I started talking to people that actually like had tried it and then like decided they didn't want to do it. And I, I wasn't exposed to them until after I graduated before I was like asking people in at UT who had made it like, oh, should I do this? And of course they're gonna be like, yeah. I mean, they, they've become professors, you know what I mean? And then so it, it was just, after that I realized like, crap, I should have I should have done more internships like while I was at UT. And then I would have had a lot more connections with people who are in the business world and it, it's like oh if they wanted to hire somebody they i could be like hey i entered that one time like remember well i would stay in contact with them i wouldn't be like hey do you remember me but you know what i mean like yeah, yeah. I, i'm in the same boat <laughs> i had a job while um like in the summer between um my freshman year and sophomore year of college um and it was like within psychology i was working at a sober rehab um, and it was like a really good um, experience, really interesting, but I did not like it um, mm -hmm. at all. And it was really good money um, and a cool location and just so many great things about it, but I was dreading it and I was counting down the days that I could go back to school. Um, and I think kind of going through that experience, I realized like I would really rather make less money um, and maybe make more sacrifices to like my lifestyle in order to be in a job that I really um, enjoy mm -hmm. um, and work hard at it um, and then figure out other ways um, 
to make money, whether it means like staying in that organization longer mm-hmm. um, and then moving up um, in the ladder, like um, or um, just gaining experience at one job and then moving to the next one. So I think there definitely is something about if you're going to spend 40 hours or more at a job, um, you don't want to hate it because there's so many people that do hate their job. Um, but like Kylie mentioned at the very beginning, it is a luxury to be able to um, be at a job that you love and be able to make in order to be able to make that decision if you don't like a job to quit and start mm-hmm. a new job exactly yeah and like for me when i was doing my student teaching there were a few factors that i just really that just didn't sit well with me while i was doing that um part of my education but one of them definitely was that if i pursued the education route and as a teacher I was going to be pretty much giving up three years of my life, like from 22 to 25 years old, um, just because of lesson plans, grading, having a whole new curriculum, being at the bottom of the totem pole pretty much in in a high school, and having to deal with huge caseloads, and I just, I wasn't, I couldn't see myself being happy between those ages, and like to me, that's just... I was too selfish, I guess, for that, you know? I was like, I want to have a social life. I want to be able to get off work, go hang out with my friends after work, and, you know, have more to my life than just my job. Mm -hmm. And I was told by so many people that wasn't going to happen, and I knew they were right based off my student teaching experience, where I would show up at the school 6.30 in the morning and leave at 8 o'clock at night. There were numerous days I never saw the sun. Mm-hmm. And because there's no windows in my school either. Um, but it was, you know, that really made me think about it. Like, I, even though it's only three years, I was like, I'm not, I'm not doing that. And there were other factors that led to this decision for me not to pursue um, a career in education. But that was definitely at the t- one of them that, like, I was, I never thought about that until I had to do it. And... I'm really glad that I made the decision that I did because I wouldn't be nearly as happy if, you know, that I am now if I had chosen that career. And that's what's kind of tough about it, though, I feel is that, like, a lot of these things I feel as a person you're not going to be able to realize until you're, like, in the situation, you know? Mm -hmm. And it, it, I think that's why I wanted to create this series is so we could talk about it. And so people could think about that beforehand. Like, it's, it's just not brought up to you until you're in that situation. Yeah. Or unless you hear other people talking about it. Um, but I think a big thing is just looking at um, just where you, where you draw your passion from. Like, I, when I think passion versus profit, I think it's, it's one or the other. Like, I gain a lot of passion from, from what I'm doing at work. Because I feel like that's a significant portion of life. But I also have a lot of friends who, like they they can do whatever and be happy like their passion is drawn more from like what they do outside of work like what they have relationships or who they have relationships with and stuff like that um but then also another thing to consider is like do you want a 40 hour a week job or do you want to be able to like maybe work a week be off a week like i know a lot of like um people in nursing field like that's how they work also um Like, if you do engineering or something like that, they have um, positions where it's, like, you could work a month and then not work a month. Like, it it just depends on, like, what you feel like you need as a person, I think. Um, Did you want to add anything? I would say, too, um, that it's becoming more and more common to switch career fields. Mm -hmm. Um, I know, like... I feel like back maybe like our parents um, time or like when our parents were growing up or even like our grandparents that you kind of had one job, one career, you stayed at an organization for 40 years, you retired and that's it. And that's not the case anymore. And I think just being open to the idea of doing something for five years, for 10 years, for 15 years, and then maybe um, as you get older and discover other passions of yours um, or realize other jobs that are out there or through networking or whatever, um, being able to um, switch careers or switch um, jobs or fields and being open to that. Um, And I think... Um, that's something that's very feasible that's something that happens to a lot of people and so kind of being open to just trying something out for a while um, 
seeing how successful you're going to be in it, seeing if it is your passion or not, um, and then not being um, afraid to switch. So what do y'all think? Do you think that you should pick a major based on passion or profit? Tell us in the comments below. If you like this video, make sure to like it, as well as subscribe to College Uncomplicated. You can also like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter at College Uncomp, and I hope you tune in next week. Okay, bye. I think the distance thing is huge because like I talked about that I looked a lot of out of state schools. I wanted to get out of state. I wanted to like not be in Texas anymore. But during my freshman year of college, when I got to come home for Thanksgiving and I got to go home for Easter and I could go home for birthdays if I wanted to, like it was nice knowing I had that option.